Very good. Lisa Parks? Thank you. And after Lisa is Alexis Boyle. I'm Lisa Parks, and um, I'm representing the Phoenix spokespeople. We're a new bicycle advocacy group, so you'll be seeing us at the budget hearings. We're sort of making our debut here. Um, and I'm Shorty. <laughs> um, and I'm here to ask for more bicycle inf infrastructure, more bicycle lanes. There are a lot of people in Phoenix that want a bike, but it's proven to be very difficult sometimes, especially in the Central Corridor and downtown. So, you know, now we're hopefully having our bike share program that's going to be implemented. Um, we're, we would like to see some bike lanes to go with that so we can get around. Good. Thank you. Thank you, and I hope you join us on Bike to Work Day next month. Sean Sweat, please come here. Evening. Hello, my name is Sean Sweat. Uh, thank you guys for having uh, plenty of these. I appreciate how much community input you guys are looking for. Um, transportation is something that uh, our city has committed itself to in the past, but primarily um, to automobile transportation. We have an excellent light rail system in place now, and we have a lot of um, commitment in terms of policy to bike bicycling as well, but we also need a lot of this to come out more in the budget and in the funding. Um, light rail uh, frequencies have grown since it originally started. They're now up to 12 and 20 minutes they need to be down to 10. So we need to provide the funds to bring light rail frequencies to 10 times, 10, uh, 10 minutes. Same with buses. There are, there are buses that even go through the central city, even go through downtown, that have um, headways of 30 minutes. Those are, those are buses that you have to keep a schedule on. You can't go to a bus route thinking a bus is going to come. You have to check schedules when you want, and when you go anywhere past 20 minutes, people do not think of them intrinsically as something they can use easily. We need to get bus headways down to 15 minutes, at least. Um, and one other thing with bicycle infrastructure, we have, uh, it's exciting to see the bicycle share coming in, and, and we have um, some people in the city who are committed to bicycling through, through policy and through their efforts they're doing in City Hall, but we don't have the funds supporting it. And it's, and it's kind of scary, actually, because the future of this city is going to depend on having transportation choices, which currently don't really exist in any meaningful way, especially when you compare it to other cities that we're trying to compete against. So if we are going to actually be successful in competing against other cities, and if we are going to have a future that is positive, we need to spend more in bicycle infrastructure and bike lanes. Atlanta recently, it was a sprawl city, just like us, Atlanta. Um, they just committed about just under $6 per capita to bicycle infrastructure. We commit three, not dollars, cents per capita to bicycle infrastructure currently. We need that at least to a dollar if Atlanta's doing six. So please think about transit and bicycle infrastructure much more in this coming year's budget. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thank you very much. Sean, you want to say about the, uh, the gentleman that's going to be in town, the walkable city, Jeff Speck? Give a free uh, commercial, why not? If anybody doesn't know, Jeff Speck, who wrote a book called Walkable Cities, um, excellent urban planner and transportation expert is coming to Phoenix um, tomorrow and Friday and he's going to be having a, an open discussion tomorrow evening at the AIA offices, 30 North 3rd Avenue on the second floor, um, talking, about, talking about how to make Phoenix walkable. So. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim McPherson. So you walk in, Jim. There you are. After Jim will be Mark Bolton. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Grosses, my councilman, thank you for your service in this meeting tonight. Uh, I won't repeat what I said uh, in the previous uh, budget hearing. After I was I read the initial documents, I then found out more about the adaptive reuse uh, line item, and so I'm going to speak a little bit about that, which I think is wonderful. From the standpoint of uh, not only restoring vintage and historic buildings, uh, facilitating those uh, businesses that want to go into those uh, buildings, creating neighborhoods. Uh, uh, we were at um, the Bee Feeders the other day, and the excitement for that project, one project for that part of town, imagine what that, what that can be uh, for, uh, to have
happen in all of our districts. So I applaud you on uh, inserting that into the budget, and I uh, support uh, uh, all your efforts today. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, very much. I should uh, mention, Jim, that uh, today, uh, as I was driving by uh, 7th Street and Osborne, I saw that Gad Zoops has opened, and I popped in uh, to talk to the owner just to see how things were going, because that was an adaptive reuse project, and asked the question, how was adaptive reuse, and get used, get ready, because you don't know what the answer is going to be. Uh, but, uh, uh, Councilman, uh, you should know that uh, he was very complimentary of the city's adaptive reuse program. He said it was a very, it was a great experience for him to go through, and uh, that restaurant is open, hasn't had the grand opening, but it actually is open right now, and uh, this is how we get through these parts quick enough. I might get over there for something neat, uh, but Gag Zeus is open on the corner of uh, 7th Street and, uh, and Osborne, had a very, very positive experience with adaptive reuse. Perhaps a cup of soup. John Romero. John, come on up. After John is Justin Johnson. Gentlemen, thank you for having me. I'm speaking on behalf of Phoenix spokespeople, the Tempe Bicycle Seller, and the Phoenix Bike Lab. I'm an impassioned advocate of cycling and everything related to it, uh, whether it be competitive or utilitarian. Um, I'm just here to say thank you for implementing the bike share program and to consider really spending some time implementing the bicycle infrastructure in Phoenix. It, it, I spend day in, day out making contact with people who ride the light rail, ride the bus, or need the bike as transportation. So I get direct feedback from all sorts of people on how Phoenix is primed to become a dynamic city involving the bicycle. It connects everything, culture, the arts, you know, families. It's, it's an instrumental uh, convention. So, give, give my druthers, you know, I'll be opening a secondary location in downtown Phoenix to support bicycle community. Um, I'm starting a uh, facility in south central Phoenix to provide training and after school programs for kids, on build a bike programs all through donations and just volunteer manpower. Um, so, just up here to speak my speak my piece. Great, thanks, John. It's awesome. Yeah, thanks. For, that's exciting. I want to know more about that. Uh, it, it'll happen. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks. 